The 19-year-old Skywalker and Kenobi were involved in a crucial mission on Coruscant 10 years after the Battle of Naboo in 22 BBY, as the Separatist crisis threatened to destroy the Galactic Republic. An assassination attempt on Padme Medalla, who was now currently a centre of Naboo, had occurred, prompting the Jedi Council at Chancellor Palpatine's request to send Skywalker and Kenobi to defend Amidala from further attacks. When Padme expressed her want to know who desired her killed, Obi-Wan began to clarify that they were only there to safeguard her life. Anakin vowed to locate the person who was behind it, which irritated Obi-Wan. Anakin felt upset when Padme withdrew to her room and said that she hardly noticed him at all. To Obi-Wan's dismay, Anakin and Padme decided that night to use her as bait in order to apprehend the assassin. Soon after, when his master saw how exhausted Skywalker was, Anakin opened up about his frequent nightmares about his mother and his strong feelings for Amidala. He was cautioned by Obi-Wan to restrain his emotions, pointing out that Padme was a politician and should not be trusted. This sparked a discussion between the two over whether or not Amidala and Palpatine were crooked politicians, as Skywalker declared his confidence in Palpatine's kindness. The Council dispatched the Master and the Padwan on different assignments. Skywalker was to protect Amidala and Naboo on his first solo mission, while Kenobi pursued his inquiry into Amidala's attackers, which led him to Kamino. Amidala rejected Skywalker's declaration of love for her while he was on Naboo, despite the fact that she felt the same way about him. Skywalker struggled to balance his intense feelings for her with his responsibilities as a Jedi. Dreams of his mother's suffering also tormented Skywalker, and he decided did to go back to Tatooine and save her. Amidala consented to go with them. When the two found water on Tatooine, he disclosed that he had sold Shmi to Clegg Lars, a moisture farmer. When the pair went to the Lars farm, they learned that Shmi had been kidnapped by Tusken Raiders almost a month before their arrival and was thought to be dead. Skywalker borrowed his stepbrother, Owen Lars, swoop bike and set out to find his mother, determined to save her with any means necessary. Despite the fact that he found her in a Tusken camp, she was wounded on the side of her face and her wrists bound to a stick and died in his arms a short while later, Skywalker, overcome with sorrow and fury, massacred all the Tusken Raiders in the village, men, women and children. Skywalker returned his mother's body to the homestead and her funeral took place there. He declared that he would grow so strong in the force that he would be able to prevent the deaths of those he loved. He was troubled by the thought of losing the ones he loved and was filled with grief and shame about disappointing her and himself as a Jedi. Skywalker and Amidala left the planet after learning that Kenobi had been taken taken prisoner on Geonosis. They went into one of the factories but were later taken prisoner and taken with Kenobi to the Pentranaki arena where they were scheduled to be killed by beasts. Mace Windu's Jedi assault team showed up to save them. After arriving with the recently formed Grand Army of the Republic, Master Yoda securely transferred the arena's survivors to gunships. They saw Dooku try to escape the fierce battle and followed him. After a cannon fire that knocked Amidala and a clone trooper out of the troop bay, Skywalker and Kenobi got into an argument about retrieving her. After declaring he didn't care if he was banished from the Jedi Order in order to save her, Skywalker only consented to carry on after Kenobi reminded him that Amidala would have carried on with her responsibilities had she faced a similar dilemma. Then, as they raced after Dooku, Skywalker again turned to gaze where she had fallen. Once arriving at the hangar where Count Dooku was preparing to depart, two Jedi engaged in combat with Dooku. Dooku defeated both Jedi after Anakin had hastily rushed into battle and Anakin can ignore Obi-Wan's instruction to engage in the battle together due to arrogance and frustration. As an acting council member and Jedi Master at this point, Nobi was chosen to go to Kato Minordia to look into the explosion. To his dismay, Skywalker was told to teach a group of younglings the lessons he had acquired as a Padawan. Despite his expressed wish to go with Kenobi on the mission, as they travelled to Langston, Skywalker met Mil Albeath, a young Zabrak girl who was feeling nauseous due to a special force connection. Skywalker made the decision to mentor and teach Albieth as she came to embrace the Force and her relationship to it because he saw her challenges as a reflection of his own. After some time, Kenobi got in touch with Skywalker and asked him to examine some data he had discovered that implicated the Republic in the bombing. Skywalker defied orders so he could save his former master with Albieth by his side. After losing communication with Kenobi, Palpatine passed the Jedi Military Integration Act upon their return to Coruscant, formally incorporating the Jedi into the 
the Grand Army of the Republic and establishing General Skywalker and General Kenobi. To calm Albeath's nerves, Skywalker also shared a tale from his youth concerning the Tatooine Sun Dragon. Albeath said goodbye to Skywalker and Kenobi, thanking the former for his guidance and letting him know that he did not always have to act like the Sun Dragon in the story. Skywalker was left speechless as he thought about her words. Skywalker, the renegade Jedi General, was not beyond breaking rules during the Clone Wars. After several months of conflict, the Jedi Council assigned Skywalker and his erstwhile mentor, Kenobi, the mission of breaking the Separatist blockade on Christosis and supporting Alderanian Senator Bail Organa in his relief efforts on the planet's surface. After being initially overpowered, Kenobi gave Skywalker a prototype Republic stealth ship equipped with a cloaking device and gave him a mission of piloting it through the blockade to bring supplies to Organa. Instead, Skywalker and Euleran decided to confront Separatist Admiral Trench head-on and take his focus away from Organa. Following Trench's defeat, Skywalker transported the supplies to Organa, though the Separatists were forced into a temporary retreat by Skywalker's unit and the rest of the Republic forces. Reinforcements were clearly needed. To his dismay, Ahsoka Tano, a young Togrugta girl, showed up instead, claiming herself as Skywalker's new Padawan and carrying Master Yoda's message for them to come to Coruscant for his new assignment. Skywalker and Tano, whom Skywalker dubbed Snips, went behind enemy lines to take out the deflector shield generator of the droids. After the two succeeded in destroying it, the Republic army was able to eliminate the droids and win the conflict. It was only then that Tano and Skywalker were able to come to an understanding and he agreed to take on the role of a mentor. Hondo and Aka contacted Supreme Chancellor Palpatine and his delegates to request a reward for capturing Count Dooku. Skywalker and Kenobi were tasked with confirming that the pirate gang had Dooku under their control and acceding to the pirates' demands that they appear unarmed. The Jedi were taken to Anaka, who set up a meeting with their prisoner. After being confronted at gunpoint in the twilight, the Sith Lord cautioned the Jedi not to overlook the weak way while the Jedi made fun of Dooku's confinement. Despite being invited to a party by the pirates, Skywalker, Kenobi and Dooku ended up unconscious in a cell bound together. Representative Binks was the one who saved the Jedi and the Sith after they had made multiple attempts to flee on their own, even if the mission cost Senator Karras his life and Dooku's freedom. After telling Anakin not to hurt Hondo, they quietly departed. Reluctantly, Skywalker consented to talk with Palpatine regarding the Xylo Beast's fate. When Kenobi and Amidala pleaded with him after the creature was brought to the Republic capital, Amidala disputed Palpatine and Masamida's arguments when they met with the Chancellor and Vice Chair, after they claimed that killing the beast was in the best interest of society. However, Skywalker remained impartial rather than taking a stand against Palpatine or his wife. Palpatine pretended to want to kill the beast, but in reality he was interested in learning more about it because of how how resilient the Zillow Beast's armour was. After managing to flee, the beast was finally put to death by gunships firing gas into his mouth at Palpatine's command. Skywalker had a nice evening at his wife's flat before the Jedi Council called him back to the temple. Santa Medalla, who was an old friend of Santa Rush Clovis, was chosen as their spy because they thought that Clovis supported the Separatist cause. When Skywalker confronted Amidala the following day in the Senate, she first declined to answer, but eventually gave in after learning that Clovis might be a Separatist. Clovis's attempts to get closer to his wife were thwarted when Skywalker disguised himself as Padme's spaceship pilot and brought him to Kato Nemodia after learning of his plans. When Amidala gave them a signal during the expedition, Skywalker and Artu Ditu slipped into her quarters and witnessed Amidala and Clovis share an embrace, which caused a wave of jealousy and rage in Skywalker. She quietly showed him the disc she had taken from Clovis and gave it to Skywalker. The Jedi then withdrew. Amidala passed out shortly after the poison that Lot Dodd had given her started to take effect. Following Dodd's admission to Clovis that he was a spy, he assisted Skywalker in returning her to the airship to travel to Coruscant, where he made Dodd give him the antidote. Even so, Skywalker left Clovis stranded on the planet. Soon after the Separatists were routed close to Dorim, Tano and Skywalker were dispatched to fight alongside Kiadimundi and Kenobi in the Second Battle of Geonosis, while the Republic went back to destroy the Geonosian major droid factory. Luminara, Anduli and her Padwan, Ara Sophie, joined Skywalker and Tano as they got into a heated argument about Skywalker's lack of faith in Tano's dependability. Anduli realised that, instead of mistrusting Tano, Skywalker was unable to let go of her and risk putting her in danger when 
of he and Towner were ordered to plant explosives in the Geonosian catacombs beneath the factory. However, the two Jedi generals proceeded to divert the attention of the droid army by directly approaching the factory and confronting the adversary. After leaving the soldiers behind to demolish the bridge, while Pargo the Lesser's super tanks were in action, Skywalker and Luminara discovered that the Apadwans had not yet returned, and Dully, on the other hand, advised him that he had to let go of his attachment to her if she were to die. Skywalker, unwilling to let his pad one die, ordered that they be tracked down. Luckily, Tano called Skywalker and they were able to locate them and rescue the two Padawans. The four Jedi generals dispatched Tano and Ophi on a mission to carry medical supplies from the medical station near Ord Sestus to Mace Windu and Antoine, while Poggle, now in Republic custody, prepared to be delivered to Coruscant. They had no idea that one of the troopers, Scythe, had a brainworm inside of him from the Queen and boarded the Pelter class frigate, infecting other clones, making the two of the Padawans fight against infected clones. Skywalker assumed that there must have been a problem when the ship did not arrive as planned, and he was confirmed to be cracked. When Tano got in touch with him to inform him of the situation, enraged, Skywalker rushed to Poggle's cell by himself and ordered the guards to back off. He insisted that Poggle answer his questions through the use of a mind trick, but the Archduke told him that a Genosian such as himself would not be affected by it. At that point, Skywalker turned to physical force and attacked the Genosian prisoner. Since Poggle was still refusing to speak, Skywalker gave in to his rage and started to force talk him. It was at that point that Poggle informed the Jedi Knight, via a translator droid, that the worms were impacted by the cold. Skywalker informed his Padawan of this information via a comlink and instructed her to break the cooling system. Like and subscribe. Until the next time on Star Wars Invader.